Right. So about that history of RAG, modern RAG was actually kind of born in 2022 then, right? Um. Yeah, I mean, I think like I forgot the exact date of the uh, like the original retrieval augmented generation paper, uh, which is not by me. Um, obviously, it was by others. Um, and so this is either in 2021 or 2022 or even 2020. Um, and the like it basically proposed this overall idea of, oh, you know, you take in um, some set of like documents and then you want to embed them, like put them through an embedding model. Um, and then put it into some some storage system that's able to like serve uh, like the relevant documents through retrieval, right? And so that's why it's called like retrieval augmented generation. Like you want to do like a retrieval pass over some storage system before you actually put it into the Allen um, prompt. So that kind of that resurfaced basically um, as yeah. more and more people start building with Allen apps. People like kind of started discovering that, oh, hey, this thing is like a cool idea. Um, and my initial version was not doing that. It wasn't using embeddings um, because at the time, I don't know why. I think it might have just been like due to like a design. Like my my goal at the time when I first started was not necessarily to make this useful. It was to just like do something cool. And so yeah. the, to me, like doing something cool was like, oh, what if we just didn't have embeddings? Or I thought about it briefly, but I was like, what I really want to do is just have the L1 um, figure it out completely on its own. Right. And I, I, I still think that would be a quite an interesting concept. Like, Instead of just like, you know, relying on a separate model, just have uh, a language model completely similar to like a human, just completely figure out how to reason, um, organize things, and then also traverse them via text. Um, yeah. And that kind of reflects in the current state of Lama Index, right? Because, I mean, you, it's kind of a central, I mean, as far as I can see, it's kind of a central part of Lama Index that you use language models as well in, during the ingestion process, not only in the, in the generation process. Yeah, so the default RAG paradigm um, really only uses the LLM at the very end. Um, so you have like um, ingestion, like ingestion doesn't need LLMs. You just uh, take in, um, you know, some data, uh, parse it, and then you just like, chunk it using an algorithm. Um, and of course, you use an embedding model um, to put it into some vector store. And then the retrieval process uh, doesn't use an LLM because uh, at its simplest, it's just like top K uh, embedding lookup. So like, you know, um, you look up stuff by embedding similarity. And so in a standard RAG pipeline, the uh, gener the the way the place where LLMs actually come in is at the very end. Uh, and it, it's only responsible for um, kind of just like synthesizing an answer from uh, a piece of unstructured text. Um, yeah. And to be totally honest, like, you know, it like even like at the start when we were just like implementing this, um, I thought it was a little basic uh, and it didn't really like make use LLMs to its full potential, right? Because like LLMs are not just uh, for generation um, and, and simple reasoning. They can actually help you make decisions. They can actually help you like add like a greater uh, a layer of like just like understanding and decision making. And so if you really wanted to make these systems more interesting, you could use LLMs kind of like at the beginning. Um, so for instance, during the data injection phase um, or, you know, during query time. Um, instead of just using it at the very end for generation, use it for like query understanding, um, use it for uh, like processing, like evaluating like the quality of your retrieve context. And then for instance, like not only just retrieving from a vector store, actually using a variety of different tools. Um, and so on the ingestion side, um, the places that you can use LLMs. And so this, this, this overall concept is pretty interesting, which is... Um, the whole point of like ingestion is to process data for your LLM app. Um, and so that's kind of like uh, ETL for LLMs, right? But you can also use LLMs for ETL um, because, you know, LLMs have an inherent capability of understanding unstructured data and transforming it. And that part I think is interesting. Like, so for instance, um, let's say, you know, for each unstructured document, you wanted to extract like a summary, the table of contents, um, like, you know, extract like uh, a set of like topics or tags for each page. Basically, you can figure out a clever way to prompt the LLM um, by feeding it in a bunch of data uh, from the document to basically first extract out a set of like structured annotations or tags. And this represents like a data transformation, basically, because you're trying to like feed in some input unstructured data and transform that into structured data. And then you can basically attach those tags on top of the unstructured data as well. And so these, like, this is just an example, like metadata extraction, that's also powered by LLMs. And this is something that, you know, um, uses LLMs, but is also independent, like, you know, useful for just like the, any sort of downstream application you want to build.
these, if you're trying to build a rag system over this, having metadata tags is oftentimes very useful. It gives you like better retrieval results, better generation quality, and and all those types of types of things. And so it, I think that interplay between LLMs um, and kind of like data transformation is very interesting because you can use it for like in the middle, but also it, you, it helps for any sort of like applications you want to build later on. Yeah, that's pretty some advanced rack techniques over there. And it kind of brings, goes back to a little bit to your, I mean, it it's a little bit adjacent to your original idea of uh, creating this kind of systems, right? Yeah, I think I think the you know I I thought about this in the at the beginning of the project, but the project was not really um, like close to kind of like realizing that vision at the time. Um, but if you think about like the overall uh, picture of like where I think um, LLM powered software will evolve, it's basically like um, there's a new type of like data like a data stack that's emerging, um, a new set of operations within that data stack. Um, to basically power like um, like AI software and to really like um, kind of uh, like we want to basically provide the right tooling to help developers build that data stack. Um, and so this is helping them figure out how do you like, you know, um, move data from one place to another um, specifically for LLMs to use. Um, and that could include like LLMs in the middle as well. And this also includes the orchestration piece on top of that data. How do you figure out how to get LLMs to interact with the data uh, through these different exit uh, interfaces? Awesome. Hello, everyone. Thank you for watching that clip. If you enjoyed that clip, you can click the link in the description or somewhere right here on the screen to watch the full conversation for free. If the podcast is not up yet, you can always subscribe to my Patreon to get early access and support the channel and this podcast. Or alternatively, you can subscribe here on YouTube, click the bell icon, and you will be notified when the full episode comes out next week. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.